The lighting was perfect. It was absolutely perfect. And then the sun decided to descend below the clouds on the horizon, and now it looks horrible. Screw it, we're just gonna continue anyway. Hello. Welcome once again to Stuff and Things, where I like to discuss stuff and occasionally even things. I'm your good friend Bradley, and today I have a box. This box shall be opened in front of your very eyes. I always have people requesting that I do more box openings. This is an order from smokingpipes.com. You can see it was packed by S. Carter. So thank you, dear sir or madam, whoever packed this, they always do a very good job. So uh, let's crack this baby open. I'll show you some of the things that I have received. I don't have a knife on me. So we will use these hands to open this box. There you go. All right. Hopefully this will not be in the way. Stay. Packing papers. Whoa, wait a minute. <laughs> yeah, let's throw this away. Uh, this is something. Oh, there we go. All right. Start off with something that I'm sure you were probably expecting. <whistles> Bam. That is four tins of Dunhill Elizabethan. My favorite tobacco has long been my favorite tobacco, will probably always be my favorite pipe tobacco. Nothing has come close to unseating it yet, though it's always possible. Someone asked me the other day if there were ever a time when Elizabethan were taken off the market, if you were no longer able to procure this blend, um, do you have some put away um, in case, you know, you need to rely on stock that you have in a cellar or whatever. Um, and also, do you have another blend that could replace Dunhill Elizabethan as your favorite blend? I have a few tins put away. Whenever I buy a stock in, I usually put one away and then the rest I leave in my, you know, kind of daily smoking shelf. And so I've got a few tins with some age on them. Probably I've got one with almost three years of age on it maybe, but not a ton, definitely not enough to last me for any length of time. Um, and as far as do I have a blend that could replace Elizabethan as my very favorite? No, but I'm sure I could probably find something. I don't know. I haven't smoked every tobacco blend out there yet. So anyway, Dunhill Elizabethan. We'll get that out of the way right now. We also, as per usual, have a bag full of pipe cleaners. I always get the extra, cl extra cluffy, the extra fluffy, like so, BJ Long's pipe cleaners. And then I also get the regular, like so, because there are some pipe stems that cannot fit the extra fluffy and bowls and shanks and so on. So always get my pipe cleaners from Smoking Pipes because it's like, I think it's a dollar twelve per bundle, whereas it's two dollars or three dollars, I think, per bundle at my local tobacco store. And as much as I like to support them, and sometimes I do buy the pipe cleaners there, but if I'm going to buy a bunch at once, I would rather pay a third of the price. That just makes economic sense, doesn't it? Now, what else have we got? All right, more packaging material. And then, aha, now this is something that has been requested many times. It is a blend by McBaron, and it is this. HH Old Dark Fired. Now I've done reviews, I did the Orlick, I believe I did the, the Orlick Dark Fired blend. I can't even remember. I can't keep track of all the, all the tobacco blends I've done. And I've done at least one HH series McBaron. I know I for sure did Vintage Syrian. Did I do a lot of Kia Flake? I'm sure you guys know better than I do which ones I've done. But I haven't done Old Dark Fired yet. Um, so this is a cool Dark Fired Burley blend. And I think there's some Flu Cured Virginias in this too. Let's see. Yes, with Flu Cured Virginias, hot pressed, Heat is added, steam the tobaccos, cause the tobaccos, intensify, marry the process, bottle of tobacco, robots are the flavor. So it should be quite good. Um, I've heard good things. I've got a lot of requests to review this, so I'm going to do so. Mac Baron HH Old Dark Fire. So look forward to that. I can't tell you exactly when this review will post, but it will be coming up in the near future. We also have, I, I think a couple weeks ago in the Sunday Smoke, I talked about how I wanted to maybe 
review some blends that were a little more commonly available blends that you could perhaps get in the drugstores in the US, things that we call the OTC blends, over-the-counter blends. Um, in the US, obviously these blends will vary depending on your locality, but as far as the United States goes, blends like Captain Black's, um, Carter Hall, Velvet, um, many, many other blends like that, but they're the ones that you won't find or that you are more than likely to find if you go into a Rite Aid or a Walgreens or something like that. And I mentioned that Carter Hall was one that a lot of people had requested me to review and it seemed like perhaps the one that had the least negative reviews. So I was going to try to get some Carter Hall, but I went around and I couldn't find any anywhere. I went to all the local drugstores and they don't seem to have their nice pipe tobacco wall anymore or their crappy pipe tobacco wall. Um, I know that there's got to be a place around here where you can still get Captain Black and all those blends, but I couldn't find it anymore. So I actually had to order Carter Hall from smokingpipes.com. Um, it's in a pouch, I guess. I wasn't expecting this cardboard box. And there is a very large pouch description, I guess, on the back of this. So that'll be fun to read when we do the actual review. I think... I think this will be the next tobacco review that I do, Carter Hall, and this isn't going to be some sort of joke review of like, look at these over-the-counter over tobacco blends, aren't they horrible? I'm going to review it as if it were any other blend, as if it were HH Old Dark Fired, any other blend that you can grab. So even though this was only like, I think it was like four bucks on smokingpipes.com, uh, I know it would be close to 16 or something if you bought it, well, maybe $12 if you bought it locally. Um, so very cheap, maybe horrible. I don't know. We're going to figure it out. So this will probably be the next tobacco review. Then we've also got, aha, three cigars and it will bore you to no end because I got once again, three Padron 2000 Nacheral. Um, I just like them. They're relatively cheap and for the price, you can't really beat them. And then finally, no, I thought I got two tins of this, but I guess not. I got the 2017 McClellan's Christmas Cheer. This is their yearly tobacco. They produce a Christmas cheer every year. Have been doing it for quite some time. This is a hand-blended premium press Virginia Flake pipe tobacco, a fine vintage, naturally sweet and limited quality. So they're always a Virginia tobacco, but they're always a little bit different and a lot of people enjoy sort of the uh, discovery of every year finding a new Christmas cheer blend and trying it out. And then there's often people have a tradition where they'll put a tin away, which is what I was going to do. That's why I thought I got two. I guess I screwed up and only ordered one tin. I'll have to look at my order. Um, put one tin away and then perhaps the next year or several years down the road, they will smoke the Christmas cheer from a previous year around the holidays. So that should be fun. So I will probably be reviewing this closer to the holiday season. So there you go. That's a fun little tobacco order. We got the old favorite, Dunhill Elizabethan. We've got the utilitarian desires, the utilitarian needs taken care of with pipe cleaners. We've got some handy dandy cigars, tasty little guys there, Padron 2000s, HH Old Dark Fired by Mac Baron, Carter Hall, a over-the-counter sort of drugstore blend pipe tobacco and the 2017 McClelland Christmas Cheer. I still have never figured out why there's a giant whale in this little crest on the packaging. I should figure that out. Anyway, I hope you all enjoyed this ridiculously exciting box opening. I've been your good friend Bradley. You've been the audience. This has been Stuff and Things. Good day.